All right, we can see we've got a few people coming in, which is good. Um, we're two minutes past now, so we might just get started. Um, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our latest HashiCorp snapshot titled First Class Federation with Nomad, um, which will be presented today by Senior Solutions Engineer, Anthony Burke, who you can see on your camera there. Um, so today, Berkey is going to show us how Nomad um, Federation provides a streamlined, no-nonsense approach to um, federated scheduling without the trade-offs. Before we get started, I just wanted to run through a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, please note that this session is being recorded um, and the recording will be made available in the next day or two. I'll send an email out to everyone who registered with a link to the recording. Um, so today's demo will last about 15, maybe 20 minutes. Um, and to keep it to that time frame, we won't have time to answer questions as we go, but please do feel free to drop your questions into the chat um, tab at the bottom of your screen there, and we'll get to the questions at the end. So with that, um, over to you, Berkey. Thanks, Mr. Murphy. All right, hello everyone. Um, my name's Berkey, uh, thanks for the introduction there. As you can see, I'm I'm from Melbourne, so I'm in the depths of lockdown at the moment. And as you can see, this unkept hair is four or five months of no haircut and the rest of it. So I apologise for my wonderfully unkept appearance. But I think we all can appreciate the uh, craziness that is COVID. So today I'm going to talk to everyone about Nomad, which is HashiCorp's application and runtime scheduler. And more importantly, one of the, the great features about it is federation. So the notion of connecting multiple schedulers together and clusters of schedulers in different regions and ensuring that wherever the application is scheduled, it can run across these regions. For a long time, the industry is trying to get here. It's been a tricky thing for other schedulers and Nomad's goal from its inception was to do this and it's now delivering upon that uh, plan, which is fantastic stuff. As Pete said, jump into Q8 any time. Let's talk through this. This is one of my uh, favourite products to work with and see customers succeed with. So if you have any questions about Nomad in any shape, form or variety about the presentation or on Nomad in general, there's an email at the end of this or the QA as part of your Zoom chat. All right. So just to position and scene set what Nomad is. Nomad's guiding principles around how the engineering team build and plan Nomad is to orchestrate any application. Now we know that there are runtime schedulers out there for Kubernetes that do focus on container runtimes and that's fantastic. They run on Linux or Windows and they execute those particular uh, scheduled containers really well. Nomad seeks to provide a single approach to orchestration and scheduling that consists for just for containers for uh, Podman, but also for Java, .NET, and other runtime applications that aren't containerized. The reality is not every workload is containerized, and, and there are so many benefits of scheduling around health checking, A-B testing, canary development, uh, pipeline-driven uh, deployment and test cycles, that scheduling for application runtimes that aren't containerized is super, super valuable. So yes, containerized workloads, bread and butter. Simplified deployment, a single binary to deploy this and a simple clustered architecture that can be run on premises or off premises on one of the clouds. The idea here is that you have consistency across your environment. Further this, this can be underlying OS of Windows, Mac OS or Darwin, and then Linux as well. So whatever you're choosing to develop, if it's a Mac application, if it's a Linux based runtime, or say it's .NET, for our Windows or the IS driver. You can schedule these applications uh, on this platform. Non-containerized applications, again, the same thing. They get bringing the benefits to these applications using the existing Nomad infrastructure you have. Add the Java driver to Nomad, and away you go. You can schedule .jar files. In a previous snapshot, I shut off deploying Minecraft and getting Minecraft up and running as a Java application with, with Nomad. So it gives you an idea of what you can do without having to run a go, go off and, oh, hang on, I need a containerized application before taking advantage of a scheduler. So with .12, the most recent release, Federation is now production almost. You could say weaponized if you want to. And amongst all the new different features they have, Federation was one of the main tenant poles of this, where it allows us to say, okay, I can simply join my multiple single Nomad clusters around, and let's say AP Southeast, one in, in Singapore and Amazon, AP Southeast, two in Sydney, and my on-premises Nomad cluster by simply running a Nomad join command and then being able to schedule my application wherever I want to using a multi-region configuration. 
And it's one of the first orchestrators to do so without having to bolt on additional capability or build on beta versions of software or uh, software to provide this functionality. So let's talk about multi-cluster federations and why we approach this. So the idea here is to provide a single control plane for monitoring run and run a single control plane for monitoring and operations that have distributed run times. So if that's on Azure, if that's on premises, if that's on AWS in the disparate regions around the world, that's fantastic. I also shouldn't slap my mic in the middle of a presentation either. So what Nomad does here is provides it in a way that is no different to how you're using Nomad today. If you're already a Nomad customer, the tweaks you make to your job file are trivial to get up and running with Federation. For those new to Nomad, the, the multi-region stanza, which I'll go through in detail short in a second, shows off how straightforward it actually is to consume multi-region. So for a long time, we've had multi-cluster visibility. I can have clusters in multiple places, on-premises, off-premises, talking to each other by using the nomad server join command and they can see each other right in the ui i can see the different regions and i'll show you that shortly what we have now in o12 with the enterprise feature we have multi-cluster deployment so i can wherever i point to that's in this case here us west central or east if i deploy it to us east if my multi-region configuration says deploy two copies in west two copies in central and five in east it's going to go do that. You don't have to go and individually manage every single job in every single region and then maintain all of that. Nomad takes care of that for you. By gossiping across the, uh, between the server clusters, you get a simplified way of deploying uh, your application. It also allows us to roll back configuration too, so you can unstage a cluster individually, independent of other regions, which I'll show you off in our demo today. So when we say no setup, it, you, you don't have to change how Nomad can configure you just, they're, they're federated already. You don't have to worry about namespaces or the topology. You just tweak the, the data center configuration from a single data center to a multi-region configuration. You have the ability of HA as part of your pattern anyway, so it looks straightforward. And I won't go through the other stuff because they're a little bit, little bit fluffy, but you've read the slide there. So let's talk about the demo I'm going to show off today. Before I show you my code block to view this example, let's look at the multi-region stands that we've introduced. There's a couple of pieces here that make it really, really flexible. One, we apply this multi-region parent stanza, which is the two things inside it. One is the strategy. How do we approach the deployment? How many regions will we deploy in parallel? One, two, three. Like if I've got 10 regions, do I want to deploy two at a time, three at a time? We can apply, control that rollout logic and behavior and tie that to canary testing and other features of Nomad. From that, I define the regions that I want to use. So in this demonstration today, I'm using Amazon. I've got a, a Nomad cluster in Singapore and a Nomad cluster in Sydney. These are federated. So all I've done to this is done Nomad server join and the IP address of the cluster. That's it. The, and what I'm going to do is how many of this job I'm deploying how many do I want in Singapore and how many do I want in um, Sydney? So I've got two in Singapore and three in Sydney. Of which there I can choose if I want the data center south or data center north or data center south. I can choose multiple data centers under here. So I might have multiple nomad clusters inside a single region as well, depending on the architecture and choices you make. So the topology that you have see before you today is this one here. I have AP Southeast 1 being Singapore has a nomad cluster called North. AP Southeast 2 in Sydney has a nomad cluster called South. Pretty straightforward, per the reference architecture, we've deployed the uh, applications here. All right, so let's go look at my code before we get started. So you can see here, look at my code and we'll look at my um, environment here. So looking at my environment, I can see I have a Nomad cluster. I look at my server, I've got two servers, one in AP Southeast 1, one in AP Southeast 2. I can see I have client associated to it, and under the region, Southeast 1, I can see it's happily deployed, it's running on AMD hardware, it's running inside AWS. You can see here the uh, configuration will sh show me about my environment, the platform is in AWS, the AMI used, the size, the instance, all that sort of stuff, right? It's detected that certain drivers installed, all those wonderful things, I think it's a decent size. Cool, and you can see here at this stage there's no jobs running. If I want to look at the other info, other cluster, 
I can easily via the UI check this out. There's no points in there. So I can see here I've got the two servers see each other because they're federated and the relevant node has no allocations. All right. Now let's look at my code. What am I going to run before you today to prove that this is not all smoke and mirrors and slideware? I have my job called Snapshot on October. It's got the multi-region configuration in, and instead of just having the normal region, I've added the parent to that, the multi-region configuration. I can see here, as discussed before, data center north, data center south. And you can see here that these apply to the region AP Southeast 2. If I look at my clients, I can see here my clients, uh, data center south for AP Southeast 2, and the configuration shows them in, uh, where are we? AP Southeast 2, right? You can see that there, beautiful. So let's go through that now and let's see what happens. We're going to run a Redis job, simple Docker container. This is a very, very trivial demo to show you how this runs. I can see here I'm going to run the task driver Docker. I'm going to schedule the Redis application and you're going to see some containers get deployed. Nothing fandangled, just very straightforward. So let me bring up my console here. So I do Nomad server members. All right, you can see I've got my north, south, the regions are applied. These are nomad regions applied, and they're deployed in the running enterprise, and then there's the public IP addresses. For those who are playing along at home, you won't be able to access this because the IP address allowed via AWS is my personal home IP address. But you, yeah, this is a public facing deployment. So let's go through this. So I'm going to do nomad job and look at the options here. So I have Nomad job. I can do a plan if I want to, but I'm just going to leave pedal to the metal and uh, run Nomad job run snapshot. And what I can see here is inside AP Southeast 1, a snapshot job is running. So I do Nomad job status. Uh, status. I can see the snapshot's running. Great. I want to know a bit more about this detail because I've applied this to just AP Southeast 1. So let's go find out some more information. I can see here that the Nomad jobs run. Data Center North, default, it's running. There's two summaries of the cache task. Two are running, fantastic. I can see these deployments running. And I can see there's a multi-region deployment. So I can see here, AP Southeast 1 is running and the deployment of AP Southeast 2 is pending. So because of what I had it doing one at a time, it's waiting for the first one to succeed before it moves on to the next region. Right, so the, the, the goal and the intention of the scheduler is to say, get AP Southeast 1 running first. Once it's successfully deployed and healthy, move on to region two. So I do nomad deployment status. I can do the region command and actually highlight the region that I want to do, AP Southeast 2, and then run that. And I can see here, I've deployed successfully AP Southeast 1, and AP Southeast 2 from the same deployment. So it doesn't matter if I targeted AP Southeast 2 first, it would have gone in through and interpreted that, run it locally, then gone back to Southeast 1. The idea here is Nomad doesn't have, it also has a leader in elections. As a consumer and user, you don't have to worry as an application engineer where I'm deploying this. If I'm a pipeline, just point it towards Nomad and Nomad will determine where to run it based on how you write your job file. So that gives us the flexibility and simplicity of scheduling application workloads and allowing the scheduler to choose where it runs, not thinking, oh, hang on, this application is this type, so I need to put it in this cluster in this region, just to find that in your job file. So I can quite happily see these are running here. And if I do nomad job status um, snapshot October, I can see there's allocations, right? And if I look at this in the UI, I can see my job, I can see that there's desired two, which was what we agreed to on region one, have been deployed and the allocations are here. You can see that these uh, small IDs match the relevant allocations here. Right? Now I go to AP Southeast two, I can see it's deployed the same job for me with the three required. So if you then couple this with additional features of Nomad, such as, excuse me, canary testing, AB testing, promoted, uh, uh, workloads when they're healthy, you promote certain numbers and keep iterating through and rolling upgrades. You have a really, really powerful tool to push out a region-wide or global or geographic-wide deployment straightforward. And that could be a Melbourne, Sydney deployment for the Aussies at home. This could be a, Mel a Perth, Sydney deployment. Or if you're a bit more APAC focused, this could be like Sydney, Singapore, Tokyo, Beijing. You could have the same application deployed out 
into each region uniquely based on how you build your job file. And what really, really is exciting about this is that if you've used other schedules before, this capability is not around. And if it in the, when there has been, it's, com it's mired in complexity. So the takeaway from this is Nomad provides a straightforward way to do, uh, to do federated deployments and multi-cluster deployments. The notion here that your ACL tokens are replicated, your um, configuration is replicated, your namespace is replicated, makes Nomad a very lightweight to approach scheduling and brings value pretty quickly. So whilst this demo is not flash and mirrors, it's pretty straightforward. You can quite clearly see that my application's happily running across multiple zones. And what I might want to do, there might become a time where I want to do Nomad uh, job stop region AP Southeast to snapshot oct, right? And here I can stop a snap, a multi-region job in a single region. Let's say for whatever reason, I want to shut down the Sydney region. I can just snap down that region and I will see in that job list, sorry, job status. I can see that, make it a little bit bigger, Berkey. I can see that if I do it here, no matter job status, region AP South East 2, I can see that that has been stopped, right? So I've stopped the city region. So now I'm only servicing out of uh, Singapore. Gives you the control to then also lifecycle independent regions as well. So Nomad's uh, region ability, ability to control origins from a centralized place and they certainly just ran it from Singapore gives you an idea of what you can do so the takeaway is Nomad provides a straightforward way of scheduling it provides users the ability to control the deployments if you want to get on the micro manage and manage where it's deployed or you can just trust Nomad to do what you've told it to do and let it deploy to multiple regions so our end state is what you see here today two workloads in Singapore three in uh, Sydney and that is Enterprise uh, Multi-Cluster Deployment and Nomad Federation. If you want to learn more and you have any questions, I've noticed there's two QAs that I'll answer in a second. Learn.hashicorp.com has a bucket load of material, of really good hands-on material for you to practice this sort of stuff. We host environments through Instruct and other learning platforms, so there's no money off your wallet. It's all off ours. For you to get up and running with these tools, so I strongly suggest going to check out the Nomad track, especially the enterprise stuff. All right, so some QA, different QA questions here I'm going to read out. Why do we need Nomad? What other options AWS, A, uh, Azure, and GCP users? So if you're comparing uh, Nomad to other schedules, the other schedule it compares to is Kubernetes, right? So when you talk about um, things like Kubernetes, the, the clouds have managed Kubernetes runtimes. And if you are in the Kubernetes ecosystem, and that's what you choose to use. You could use EKS, AKS, and the Google's version, right? For those who want a runtime that doesn't require all that overhead or in terms of running Kubernetes, Nomad's a strong, a viable alternative for which we have does uh, lots of customers around the world using very, for dozens of different use cases. There's stuff in low, low orbit, there's stuff doing distribution of medical supplies. Uh, Roblox is a public customer of ours who talk about their gaming platform like, like Minecraft. So yeah, that's out there. Um, how does it differ from Terraform? Um, Nomad is Nomad jobs are written in HashiCorp configuration language or HCL and can be interpreted as such. Um, Terraform, being an infrastructure as code tool, can provision Nomad clusters and jobs if it need be. Uh, Prasad, to another question: Can no more Nomad jobs be pushed to a Git repository, and can I use it in a CI/CD pipeline? Absolutely. So uh, I did a custom for customers that use us in a demo I did recently for a single, uh, Singapore customer was having GitLab and GitLab runners go off and render Nomad jobs and run them on a cluster. So absolutely part of pipelines. And how does Federation help in deployments to different data centers? So that, that's the entire crux of Federation here is that Federation has the ability to take a cluster, let's say one on AWS and one back on premises to federate them, to join them together and make them as two logically separate but connected pools of resources that can be used. So Rowan Wiley's question, by using the Nomad server join command, you can join to another Nomad cluster with the relevant ACL tokens, <coughs> excuse me. With the relevant ACL tokens, you're able to connect securely and uh, encrypt the traffic with MTLS if you need to, and have that uh, connectivity between two separate Nomad clusters. And Ben Fortuna, here we go. I know that name. 
Does Nomad eliminate the need for a separate environment, such as dev, UA, sit, or would you still manage them separately in different environments? So you can use namespaces to isolate. Now with the recent additions of a container network interface and container storage interface, coupled with resource quotas and namespaces, you absolutely can run the same workloads like for different environments on the same Nomad cluster. Absolutely. There'd be no issue with doing that. We have customers doing that now. We Things like resource quotas allow us to avoid noisy neighbor or noisy container being scheduled. It also guarantees an um, X amount of resources for an, a given cluster or runtime. Um, this depends on your requirements, Ben. So in terms of your constraints and your risks, are there workloads you want separate for other reasons, how you access the cluster, all those sort of things. Um, in the case of, I know the customer, I won't mention your name, but I know it for yourself, Ben, um, it would wildly depend on your environment requirements for yourself. And I'm ha let's have a chat about this afterwards. But um, look, why I see customers uh, use a dev cluster purely to test the upgrade process and those sort of things, and then promote to a, a production cluster. But more often than not, you see production only clusters, which have namespaced access to different um, environments as dev, sit, and UA. So they're the current questions. Let me see there's all oh, some more. No, Warren, cool. So I can manage. Uh, Prasad, no, that's um not no, you wouldn't you wouldn't manage Kubernetes jobs or things with nomad jobs, no. Um, Kubernetes is a different runtime scheduler. So it's a different uh, it's if you want to be like it's a competitor to Nomad. So no, you wouldn't do that. Brad, oh no, hello, Mr. Cleary, how are you? Um, can Nomad schedule PaaS deployment? So if I understand the context of your customer correctly, um, we have the ability to schedule, if you want to, uh, you can schedule .NET runtimes, traditional runtimes like Java, .NET, uh, raw execs, so you can run like local applications like Apache or IIS. You can use Roblox's IIS driver. You can schedule VMs. So if you have a KVM environment, you can use libvirt to actually schedule virtual machines on Nomad, right? which allows you to take ability of pipelines and HCL to manage those environments. You can also provision the containers if it's Docker or, or Podman as well. Now, is it true PaaS? It's debatable, but it gives you a flexibility of taking existing existing things you have now and wrapping a schedule around it. Um, we've got a call, Brad, you and I, later in the week, which I, I plan to show you some stuff around this anyway. Uh, Rowan, again, does Nomad really, oh, how does Nomad really differentiate itself from Kubernetes? Um, after spending four years working with Kubernetes at a previous company, I find it really differentiates itself in its architecture and its, and its simplicity, right? I've worked with customers who have teams of two to three people managing Nomad clusters of two to 3,000 nodes because it's straightforward. It's one binary you install, so the Nomad binary. The architecture is, it, whilst it's simple, it allows for complex operations. Like it's a very straightforward architecture. It's very elegant as a, and it's very def, well-defined. Nomad's scope is focusing itself on doing what it does well and ignoring some of the other features at exclusion to focus on what it does exceptionally well. So can Kubernetes do the same thing as Nomad? Yes. Does Nomad do the same thing as Kubernetes? Yes. Do they differentiate themselves? We find it in the operations side of the house, we really should have a strength as well as ability to uh, federate as we are discussing today. How do you use cronjob distributed with Nomad? So there's a mark, I'll link you to um, I can't find it right now because I'm talking and I can't, I'm a male, I can't multitask. There is an awesome post from Cloudflare literally yesterday. Um, I'm gonna actually, I have it here actually, which which Cloudflare who use Nomad to power pretty much like a lot of the internet, actually have, I'm gonna copy it here. Here's my link into the chat answer, type answer. Here, they actually use, if I can just send, there's a reply there to Mark that actually shows, um, how they use Nomad to have content at the edges and then schedule cron jobs on top of it. So use cron triggers to do batch jobs at certain times. So Nomad is absolutely used for things like batch jobs and cron triggers. Um, and that detail of how they do that for Cloudflare is a public reference of that. So that should hopefully answer your question. 
are, even if it doesn't, please email me at, as the email on the screen, Berkey at HashiCorp. But I'd love to know more about your, your use case, Mark. But with that, I think that looks like all the QA done. Um, over Back over to Pete. But thank you everyone for your time today. Yeah, thanks, Berkey. Great, great demo, mate. Um, very nice work. Good to see all those questions as well. And look, if you do have any other questions for, for Berkey, his email address is there showing on the screen. So just jot that down. But also remember that we'll be sending out a, a link to the recording so you can watch it and write down more slowly uh, at your leisure um, once I send that through. So I'll be sending a link um, in the next day or two. Um, and uh, yeah, reach out to Berkey if you've got any questions following that. Um, and if you like what you heard today about Nomad and want to learn more, I encourage you to visit that um, URL right there as well, learn.hashicorp.com. Gives you lots of information about our various products and you can dive a bit deeper into Nomad. So, um, and that brings us to the end of it. So thanks again, Berkey. Great job pre presenting there. And um, we'll definitely have you back for the next Nomad uh, topic. And thanks for sure. keeping to time, mate. I know these are, are hard to keep them short, but um, it's good to see so many questions come through. But once again, thank you everyone for joining. Um, appreciate you taking the time and I uh, hope to see you on the next one. Until then, bye for now.